Just making sure you can hear me okay and see me okay. Check one, two. Cool. Hey, everybody. All right. Awesome. Uh, what we're going to do today, this is the acoustic guitar workshop. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show you some things related to the acoustic guitar to try and get your playing a little more authentic and maybe a little bit more creative. Um, I always think there's a lot of things that we do as guitar players where we practice fundamental elements, which is really important to do, you know, like scales and chords and theory and things like that. But oftentimes we forget to spend some time practicing creative stuff, which is really important. And so I'm going to make a mixture of those today in this workshop. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for joining me. So let's go ahead and get started here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to talk about dynamics. Now, most of you know, I, I'm very much an electric guitar player, right? It's not that I don't play acoustic. I play acoustic quite frequently. Uh, but if I had to define myself or, as one or the other, I think I play electric more than I play acoustic, um, just for the styles of music that I tend to play and things like that. But the single most important thing about the acoustic guitar that the electric guitar can never replicate is its ab ability to create natural dynamics. Um, you know, with an electric guitar, you can turn down the volume or you can strum a little softer and that sort of thing, um, or a little louder, of course. But the acoustic guitar just has this wonderful... <laughs> dynamic uh, space, if you will, th that just makes it unbelievable. And so the first thing I want you to really be thinking about when it comes to acoustic guitar is not just that you are making rhythm or that you're strumming. That's what we often refer to as strumming. It's not just that. It's the way that you're strumming. It's the, the variations of your strum that you're putting in there because it makes all the difference in the world. I've always heard when I was a kid, I always heard that, you know, the, the greatest lead players were really great rhythm players, right? Or the way to become a really great lead guitar player is to become a really great rhythm guitar player. And there's, 100% truth in that because your availability of being able to not only express yourself with the instrument, which is that creative thing I was talking about, um, but play it with confidence and with authority is what really makes the difference. So it's not what style of music that you're learning how to play or whether it's electric or whether it's acoustic or whatever it might be, fast or slow. All of that stuff is kind of irrelevant. It's the availability of being able to make yourself sound authentic. Okay. So if we think about it, when I go to play this, okay, let's just take a G chord, for instance. I'm just playing a four-finger G here. And if you play your G differently than me or something, don't worry about it. It's perfectly fine for now, okay? Now we're going to go into great detail on strumming and rhythm and groove and all those sorts of things in the course, but let me give you some tips. So the first thing is understanding that when you go to strum, right, we're given whatever situation we find ourselves in, we're given a tempo, right? So let's say our tempo is this. Okay, that's our tempo. We're going to be going right there. Okay, so then I go to strum over this. Now, what I want to be aware of is the fact that I've got all those down strums, but I don't necessarily want to strum all of them. And I don't want to strum them all with the same dynamic level. Okay, and then of course I've got my up strums in between. So if I'm doing this, my ups would be. So one thing I want you to really think about, and I know it seems simple, but it is so important to the success of making your guitar sound authentic, is not just understanding that, again, from that logical perspective, you know, quarter notes and eighth notes and sixteenths and downs and ups. That's important. That's the rudimentary practice, right? But what I want you to do is just take some time out of your day and just practice strumming and exploring all of the uh, variants that you have when you strum this guitar at this tempo or whatever tempo it is you choose. What I think about, 
and you might have heard me talk about this before, but I, I call it organic strumming, and then within that I call it ocean strumming. Now what happens is, um, with organic strumming is you're not really thinking about the guitar in terms of a strumming pattern, like down, 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 up, down. Okay, those all exist. There's mass mathematical possibilities for all of these different things that you can do um, with downs and ups, things like that. Putting them in different places. It's not really that. What you're doing is you're just learning how to move away from the guitar and then move back into the guitar at random points in time. And what you're doing is almost thinking about it like phrasing if you were a singer or if you were soloing. You're trying to make it different each time. Okay, so maybe you're strumming a little bit more and then you're strumming a little bit less. Maybe you're strumming a little bit harder and then you're strumming a little bit softer in different places. So what I think about is if we were to eliminate the chord entirely and just scratch, okay, so my mind is completely focused on strumming, on rhythm, on groove. It's not worrying about whether the chord sounds great or whatever that might be. I'm just focusing on my avail availability of being able to create something interesting. That's what organic strumming is to me, is that you're just naturally letting things come out, okay? So if I was to take this and just start kind of putting my down ups where they were, right here, but what I do is I start moving away and coming back in at various different points in time. And that also includes up strums, not always starting on a down strum, but learning to kind of accentuate those up strums at different times. So I might be going like this. See how I hit that up? Now I'm not, again, I'm not aware, I'm not thinking down, up, down, up. I'm not thinking about it that way. I'm just thinking that's what I'm thinking in my head. And my hand is hitting at various points in time here. Now, I can also hit different groups of strings at different points in time. Like, I always kind of think about my, my pick is really, I'm either hitting everybody, or what I'm doing is I'm kind of breaking the guitar into three different kind of sections. I've got the top, the middle, and the, the bottom toward the floor. Now, there's no exactness to this. It's just the different sounds that I can get. that I can strum at different points in time. So again, this is a creative process that you want to learn to spend time with, and it's not exciting, right? It's not that one guitar lick that you think is going to put you over the edge and it's just going to be the most amazing thing. After you've been playing for a while, a while you realize that these fundamental elements are the things that carry you through all, I mean, I can't even tell you how many musical situations I found myself in, and it's not just because of my availability of being able to explain some, you know, mode. <laughs> you know, it's not that. It's my av availability to play. I hear and I respond, right? And if I'm with a group of people, which is what we call a band, right, I get the gig or don't get the gig for my av availability of being able to sort of um, merge into what it is that they're doing. That's what this whole thing is about. So when I go to play, now I can add that G chord in and keep all of these different things kind of connected to that. And of course, the tempo might be a little bit different. My groove might be different depending on what the other instruments are doing. But I'm aware of my availability to be able to move in and out or away from those strings at different points in time. Instead of going... For four minutes, right? Because that might get old for you and it might get old for your listener. So you really want to learn to think about that. Rhythm is far more important than people give it... Uh, the credit that it, it deserves and, and the time that it, it needs to nurture that. You know, I, when I was learning how to play, I was completely guilty of this because I was learning from a Mel Bay book, if any of you know what Mel Bay is. I was learning from a Mel Bay book and, you know, the emphasis wasn't on strumming. It would have some strumming patterns in there, but the, the concept of creating rhythm didn't, it didn't focus on that at all. So I never thought about that. I would just go...
and wonder why my my playing sounded so boxy, right? It sounded so, you know, I don't know. It it just didn't sound authentic, and that's why is because I wasn't adding anything authentic. I was just playing by the numbers, really, is what I was doing. So I want you to really think about that. 